In this video, we visit the Creative Technologies Academy in Grand Rapids, Michigan, to see how choice theory concepts can be used to create need-fulfilling instruction. In this high school classroom, we'll watch as English teacher Katie Nimczewski uses a sense imagery activity in which students imagine what an event might look, sound, feel, or smell like. This engaging strategy is based on a well-accepted principle that if students can create detailed images of information they are receiving, they can improve their comprehension and retention of that information. Now let's watch as Ms. Nimczewski introduces her lesson. My name is Katie Nimczewski and I'm a language arts teacher here at CTA. Today we're working on sensory image. Um, we are going to be reading through several descriptions of what's going on in Haiti right now. And after that, the students, well, during the reading, they're going to be recording sensory images, what's activating their senses. Um, they're going to be then taking all those descriptions and putting them into figurative language. And from there, they'll create a poem with that. OK, guys, um, so it's kind of ironic that today our eighth graders brought around this Haitian relief um, coin jar. So if you do have things that you'd like to donate money-wise, please make sure that you do that. Um, but today we are going to be reading through all of this information about Haiti. And you can close your eyes while I'm reading it. And I want your senses to be activated. So start thinking about, you know, what are you seeing in these images in your mind? What are you hearing if you were there? Um, what are you smelling? What, are you, what is your body feeling like? What are you touching with your hands if you were in this situation? Um, and finally, what would you actually taste in your mouth, if anything at all? Okay, you'll have lots of description. Um, just try to stay focused on taking in that information through your sensory sensors. <laughs> okay, so you can close your eyes, but you have to jot down some notes at the same time. So, all right. Any we questions? Have our eyes to write? Of course. I know. I know. <laughs> all right. Here we go. It sounded like a tornado, followed by a bomb dropping. Then the noise under the ground started, said Franz Floristal from Atlanta, who was visiting Port-au-Prince. You heard the noise under the ground, and it's shaking and shaking, and everyone started running. Houses were falling and falling. All of the fences were falling. People were falling. People were crying. Twenty seconds later, it was over. There was nothing but rubble and dirt. You cannot see the air. All of a sudden, it's dark, he said. After that, you saw the sun. The sun was falling under the horizon. An aid worker was rescued yesterday afternoon after almost 24 hours under the rubble of a collapsed staff house. At the time of the quake, Trepanier, a Canadian logistical administrator, was resting in her bedroom on the second story because she had been feeling ill. She ended up falling through two floors and landed in a small space in the basement under a mass of debris. The organization said local employees had risked their lives to save Trampanier from the basement, knowing from her intermittent cries for help that hope was not lost. When they pulled her out, she was bewildered in shock with minor injuries. She has been in contact with her family and is recovering. The stench is overwhelming. There are a hundred bodies here, adults and at my feet, a baby. Perhaps even more uncomfortable is that there are people bedding down for the night, sleeping among the dead. Price said a handful of doctors were trying to tend the wounded. A man called Nicholas told him his daughter had suffered two broken legs when the radio station building at which she worked collapsed. Her mother is helping her because the doctors do not have the proper materials to help her. Wayne Snow was born in the U.S. but moved to Haiti when he was two years old. He works for Youth with a Mission in Haiti. He told KLTV, they have bodies that are just piled up along the sides of the roads and the hospital has also been damaged by the earthquake. We watched as people tried to dig other people out. Some were living and some were not. We have water trucks that they're driving around the city getting water to those that need it. But there are several water pipes in the city that have been broken. So the water situation is grave as well. Fresh water is hard to get. A 24-year-old student was in an English class when the building collapsed. The professor is dead. Some of the students are dead too and he suspected that he has several broken bones. He said, everything hurts. Hotel Villa Creole employee told of a group of women singing traditional religious songs during the night. They sing because they want God to do something. They want God to help them. We all do. 
Duma lost four relatives in the earthquake. Foreigners slept around the hotel's pool and scores of injured Haitians lay outside the damaged hotel. Bodies were visible all around the hilly city under rubble, lying beside roads, being loaded into trucks. Scattered bodies were laid out on pavements, wrapped neatly in sheets and blankets. Voices cried out from the rubble. The 2010 Haiti earthquake was a catastrophic magnitude of 7.0. Its epicenter was 16 miles from the capital of Haiti, Port-au-Prince. The earthquake occurred at 5 p.m. local time on Tuesday, January 12th at a depth of 8.1 miles. There were about a series of at least 33 aftershocks, 14 of which were between magnitudes of 5 and 6.0. The International Red Cross estimated that about 3 million people were affected by the quake. The Haitian Interior Minister anticipated on the 15th of January that the disaster would claim between 100,000 and 200,000 lives. By January 18th, over 70,000 bodies had been buried in mass graves. The earthquake caused major damage to Port-au-Prince and the surrounding area. Many notable landmark buildings were significantly damaged or destroyed the Presidential Palace, the National Assembly Building, Port-au-Prince Cathedral, and the main jail. The United Nations reported that the headquarters of the UN Stabilization Mission in Haiti, located in the capital, had collapsed, and that the mission's chief, his deputy, and the acting police commissioner were confirmed dead. Through the nights following the earthquake, many people in Haiti slept in the streets, on pavements, in their cars, or in makeshift shanty towns, either because their houses had been destroyed or they feared standing structures would not withstand aftershocks. Construction standards are low, the country has no building codes. Engineers have stated that it is unlikely many buildings would have stood through any kind of disaster. A representative of Catholic Relief Services has estimated that about two million Haitians live as squatters on land they do not own. The country also suffered from shortages of fuel and potable water even before the disaster. Um, the Air Force base has had issues. Um, the presidential palace and offices and records have been destroyed. Um, High-ranking government workers are tending to wounded relatives or dead and the president and his remaining cabinet are meeting with UN planners each day, there remained confusion as to who is in charge, and no single group had organized relief efforts as of 16th of January. During the days following the earthquake, hundreds were seen marching through the streets in peaceful processions, singing and clapping. Okay, I'm going to stop there. Make sure you have all of your sensory images written out. I would like to take just a few of them um, in case some of you maybe missed one of the senses and we'll put them on the board together and then from there you guys are going to work on creating your figurative language similes, metaphors, personification from your descriptions. Okay, So let's do a couple together. All right. Let's talk about sight first. Tell me some things. If you were in this situation, what are you seeing? What images? Scott? Bodies. Bodies. Tyler? Buildings collapsing. Okay. Collapsed buildings. Jared? I picture like bodies being thrown into trucks. Okay. Trucks. And not just putting them, but being thrown. Oh. Yep. One article talked about the fact that they actually had to just be almost disrespectful for the, these bodies, but they, could, they just didn't have time. They had to get these bodies out of there so people weren't spreading these sicknesses. So it was pretty sad. Yep. People running and walking. People running. Grace? Frantic people. Frantic. RJ? Uh, like mothers crying at the foot of their dead child. Mm -hmm. It was a horrible, horrible image. Cassie? Sadness. Sadness. 
And if you have some abstract words in your descriptions, make sure that you put them into concrete descriptions. Okay. Um, what does sadness look like? You know, give it. We talked about personifying sadness just the other day. Actually, describe it physically. Okay. All right. How about some sounds? What are you hearing? Captain? Crying. Crying. Grace? People like people yelling each other's names. Yelling names. Luke? Some people are happy, like shouting for joy because they find living mm. loved ones. Just these extremes of emotion, right? One minute you are, you know, in hysterics because you cannot find your child, and then the second, you know, someone finds a mother or a relative in the rubble. Okay. Um, Jared? Um, okay, next is Jared. Sirens. Sirens. Xavier? Like booming and crashing of things with like airplanes over there. Mm -hmm. Like helicopters hover. Yeah. Cool. Crashing. Aircraft. Um, yeah, they have tons and tons of people flying into the airport, um, even though it's kind of damaged, but they are getting aid in and resources. Um, but there's like this massive presence of militaries from all over the world right now in their country. So you're seeing a lot of soldiers. That's what I put for one of my sites, but I'm not, I'm yep. not sure Yep, definitely. Yep. The singing. And the clapping. singing. Singing and clapping. I found that particularly fascinating that in this awful, awful devastation that there's still there's hope. There's the singing is almost all these desperate cries to God, you know, or to someone, please help us. Yes. Sounds of despair. To sounds of despair. Another kind of abstract word, so when you go to make your figurative language, you're going to have to tell us concretely, what do you mean by despair? What are those sounds of despair? Yes? Like a frightening dead silence when you're by yourself. Mm. It's like when you're in a dark room. Right? Dead silence. And you know it is dark. Okay. When this happened, you know, what happened to the electricity? Oh, I know. Oh, I know. There's nothing. Um, communication, all of that stuff was down. There's dead silence. People... You know, just these little things coming through the silence. Yep. Fire cracking from the debris of buildings. Yep. So first. All right. Let's move on to some smells. What are you smelling? Diapers. Diapers? Yeah. Because they said babies forever. Okay. Yep. Yes. Hmm? Dust. Dust. Oh, that's the first one I had. Okay. There was a picture online of a child that was completely covered in dust. It was just terrible. Scott? Rotting bodies. Rotting bodies. Venice? I don't know. Same thing. How about touch? What are you feeling? You know, what? what's going on there? <coughs> Tyler? I got one for smell that I said blood for smell. Ooh, yeah. blood it does have a distinct yeah. coppery smell or something. Yeah. Iron. Iron. Yeah. Iron. Maggie? Blue bodies and maybe. What was that for touch? Bloated, yeah, touch, yeah. Feeling <coughs> bloated bodies. Miss some chest pain. Yes. Have you been watching the news on this the, stuff? Like, mm -hmm. have you seen on the news, mm -hmm. like, it shows dead bodies just lying on the streets and stuff? On yep. the news. <laughs> yep. I've never seen that before on the news. It's, yeah. It's pretty graphic stuff. Pretty awful. Worst than any scary movie. Jared? I had, like, your legs are sore and your body is sore from, like, running and, like, falling and all that fun stuff. Fun stuff. Okay. Yeah. One of the basic things that they have to do right now because of lack of medical supplies um, <coughs> is just amputate. If you've been crushed, they're amputating your limbs. Um, they're making splints and things out of, like, cardboard and trash that they're finding. Um, Pretty sad. What else are you feeling with your hands? Hunger. Or your, hunger. your body? Yes, yeah, so you're feeling hunger. Okay. Luke? Feel chills running down your spine. Chills running down your spine. And what causes that? 
just like being being surrounded by bodies and death. Mm -hmm. Or just, just so much fear. Yep. All right, and lastly, this one's kind of a tough one, but what are you tasting? Scott? Dryness. Dryness in your mouth, right? Okay. Going without food or water. Some of these people are in places so remote that these rescue people can't get to them yet. Um, damage of the roads or going through the mountains. Yep. Half dust, in your mouth. dust, yep. Dust in your mouth. Sandy. Half in? I actually heard that they, they ate and mud just to fill up their stomachs. Yep. Oh, dude. That is true. It's messed up. Xavier? Like uh, oily, thick, humid air. Mm. Uh, oily, thick. I like that descriptor. It's like air. Okay. Turn your paper over. <coughs> I have three examples there of what I need you guys to do. Okay. Don't use mine though. Come up with your own. I want to know what's in your unique mind. Okay. So take these images. Okay, like the image of sight. We talked about it together too. Bodies piled on top of each other. Turn that into a simile to make it even more interesting. Not interesting necessarily in this case, but almost more descriptive. Okay. Um, the bodies were piled like matches in a matchbox. Matchbox. Okay. Um, sense image of sound, the people were singing in the streets, okay, we talked about that description. Turn that into a metaphor. The streets were churches where songs of desperation rang out. Um, sense of touch, amputations being performed. Personify that, um, give, you know, some personification or human qualities to the knife, perhaps. The knife ferociously alienated my broken leg from the rest of my body, okay. Um, these take a while too, so don't think, you know, if you just start right now and you can't get them, you know, within the next 20 minutes, don't worry about it. I want you to take your time on these. I want you to make sure you're staying away from cliches. Um, what are cliches? Something overused. Good. Did you have a comment or question? Um, can we, do we have to use what we have down or can we use what? You can use have? anything. Anything. Okay. Yep. Anything from here? Anything on your papers? Um, and we have to use each one of these? Or just you, one? you might use only like a simile for sight. Maybe you'll use a metaphor for sound and a personification for smell or something like that. Um, maybe you are um, finding that you can do really good similes. Okay? You can create these really descriptive similes. Then just go with that. Okay, I'm just trying to get to you to take these descriptions and put them into this figurative language. Okay, um, notice how how it works. Like you know, these descriptions are um, pretty graphic, but when you put it into figurative language, it just makes it kind of shocking. Okay, um, it, it, people can understand. You know, taking that abstract sadness or despair, and they can then see it. Okay, it becomes tangible instead of just this word out here that we don't really know what it looks like, okay? Any other questions? All right, please work on that assignment. Pungent? What does that mean? Pungent? It's like so, a smell so strong that you, um, you know, have you ever smelled something and your eyes start watering or you just, it's, like, mm -hmm, it's so pungent, you know, just extreme s strong so smell. Okay. Acrid is another synonym for that. Just, um, you know, when you think about like some of the worst smells that you've smelled, that they're very pungent. Desperation. Can you compare their desperation to something else? <laughs> okay. Well, let's talk about the falling buildings. What does that look like to you? <coughs> it's 
good. You've got excellent descriptions. How did you do with the, uh, the figurative language here? The bombs dropping, yep. What kind of figurative language do you think that is? Even though it has the word as in it, mm -hmm. um, it's technically not a simile, okay. but you've got some great words in here that could be compared to okay. something else. Okay. Good, that's high school. Touch. Yep. Okay, see if there's any way that you can um, add in a simile, maybe. You know, how cold was it? Okay. And compare it to something else. Use the words like or as, and then you have a really good simile. Okay. okay. Mm -hmm. Remember that using ice would be probably a what? A lot of people say cold as ice. That'd be kind of cliche. Mm -hmm. So go into Cassie's brain and find something really unique okay. and different and new of a way to describe how cold these bodies were. Okay? Okay. Guys, some of you are finishing up with your figurative language. What you need to do then is take all of those images and put them into a poem. Okay? Take the line paper, just take them all, you know, they're all kind of separate on your other paper. Just, just put them together, them. okay? Um, if you have, you know, like maybe two sensory images dealing with smell, lump them into their own stanza, okay? Lump the sight images into one stanza. What's a stanza? A stanza? What's a stanza? Section. Kind of like a really short chapter-ish kind of thing. It would be, an analogy would be like it's a paragraph of a story. A stanza is like a chunk of a poem. Okay, does that make sense? Understand now, Jared. All right. You got some excellent description. Now, what we need to do is let's start with some similes. Okay. Okay. Um, which of all of these is the most um, interesting to you, or stuck out the most for you? This side. The scent or sight, okay. Sight. So, and sound. and sound. All right. Can someone please share one of their examples before we go? Some of you willing to? Xavier? Yeah. I'm just saying it loud right here. Yep, nice and loud for us, for everybody to hear. All right, the title is Tragic. There was a big boom and bang as the sirens and crying harmonized the worst song I'd ever heard. Smelling the smoke, smelling the death, so many bodies were put to harsh rest. Short days, long nights, no working electricity or lights. Feeling like a patient, having all my limbs ripped off, then sewn back on. I wish I could go to sleep and never wake up, because it's hard to barely even stand up. Story of a boy, not from the U.S. nation, he survives every day, is a faithful Haitian. Wow. That was great. Was great. Excellent job. Okay. One more. Tyler? The buildings felt like a stack of dominoes. The sound of babies crying was heard as much as hearts beating. The smell of blood was all over the street like the air we breathed. I felt the roads were slippery as, like with blood like ice. Their tears tasted salty like the ocean. Their mouths were as dry as the desert, bodies were as numerous as buildings collapsing, people were silent as a mouse, and the sirens were as loud as a hard rock band without earphones. Wow. <laughs> Excellent. Excellent. Any 
Anybody else? You guys have some great ones out there. You should share them out loud so people can hear these beautiful works of writing. As I come conscious, I, I hear the burning of hell and wailing lost souls. I rub my eyes and see little kids wandering hopelessly like a fish in the sea. I gag as it smells like a nursery for zombie babies. I look around and pick up an old toy, but it turns to ash and runs through my fingers like the tears all around me. A medic gives me a bottle to wet my mouth from the dry, dust, from the dry dusty surroundings. Life, there's still hope. Yep, yep, we've got... Uh, mine's from, like, the, the view of, uh, like, a guy who got rescued. Okay. And he's in a hospital bed. That's oh. not... As I awaken in a hospital bed, confused in days, the memories in my head hit me like a semi-truck jackknifing down an icy road. As I look down, I see only one leg, the other wrapped in a bloody bandage, about a foot shorter than I remember. I can't feel anything as my body's numbness almost feels good. As I try to remember where my family is, I just can't recall. Then it hits me. My house collapsed as I was outside helping my brother plant a palm link in our front yard. The sound of our family being crushed kills my ears as my brother rushes for the front door, which no longer stands. I know in my head that it's too late and we need to seek help, but my brother is frozen at the foot of our house, staring into the rubble, hoping to see a hand or a foot to grab a hold of, but nothing, but nothing seems to move. Then dead silence hits. Brother, we must go, I shout, as he stares into the nothingness of our debrayed memories. Brother, but he doesn't move. As I peek over my shoulder, I see bodies floating upon the concrete like a sea of death, the sound of women crying at the foot of piles of people stacked like dead pigs in a meat locker. The smell of smoke filled my nostrils, and I'm not done. Very nice description piece. All right. So, you guys, um, you're getting kind of into the habit now of using figurative language, using sensory descriptions, sensory details. We talked when we started our poetry unit on, you know, what makes good poetry, and you've just done it. You guys are doing an excellent job with this. Brilliant poets right here. Okay, good job. All right, let's get ready to go. I need to collect those. If you don't have yours finished, you want to take it home and fix it up. Um, I think it went pretty well. Um, the kids seem to pick up, you know, the concept of taking the description, the sensory images, put it into the description, and articulate it into some figurative language. Um, there were a couple students who were really struggling um, with taking their descriptions and putting them into the figurative language. So that kind of tells me I need to go back with those two students and probably work on um, personification, similes, metaphors a little bit more. Um, but overall, they had some awesome poems. Um, and it's going to be pretty cool for their final project, which is a poetry anthology. So that will probably be one of the entries for all of them. I think, you know, one of the really cool things about this particular activity um, and getting kids engaged is it has to be stuff currently going on. Um, and you can do that like in an English class with a text that's really old or classic. You can still relate things that are happening with current events, um, relate them all together, and the kids finally connect with them. Connection is the most important thing for these guys. They know this is going on, they've been hearing about it at home in the news. Um, so to do an activity on it, they're already kind of engaged. They want to know more about what's going on with this horrible tragedy. So.